So we could all agree here that Peanut and Fred should never have been euthanized, never. And now we have exclusive new information from the DEC, not just their account of why they took Peanut and Fred since they were living with Mark and Daniel Alongo, supposedly creating the potential for human exposure to rabies that one of their officers was bit. And in order to test for rabies, they said they had to euthanize Peanut and Fred. But hold on a minute. Squirrels are extremely resistant to contracting rabies. We're told nine, nine of about 30,000 squirrels tested in the entire U.S. have ever tested positive. And according to the CDC, no squirrel has ever transmitted rabies to a human. Also, since the DEC claims one of its agents was bitten, the DEC had the choice of a 10-day isolation period to observe if Peanut and Fred had any symptoms. Now, as far as cases of raccoons transmitting rabies to humans, that is rare. Yes, there are, they are a common rabies carrier, especially in the eastern part of the U.S., but direct transmission to humans is, quote, infrequent. But the, mo that the CDC reports most human rabies cases here in the U.S. are from bat exposure, not raccoons. They say raccoons are more likely to transmit rabies to other animals with raccoon to human transmission extremely uncommon. Now, okay, also, we spoke with a few wildlife rehabbers on the national level who spoke with the DEC firsthand. And first off, we're told many of the DEC officers reportedly agree that what happened was wrong, that it was more of what some might call a vendetta. But why a possible vendetta against a squirrel and a raccoon? Here's the deal, because Mark and Daniela Longo never had a license, they say, or a permit for Peanut and Fred to live with them. DEC claims they told them to get the necessary licensing, and they allegedly tried to work with them. They allegedly tried to work with them. We're also told there were not one, not two, but 25 complaints. Now, we're waiting to hear more from them, and so far, nothing. We've made several email requests, nothing. We're just looking for more transparency from the DEC to the American public. And why aren't we getting that transparency? You know, also, experienced wildlife rehabbers will tell you that one of the biggest no-nos is when you're rehabilitating wildlife, you never cross state lines. The reason some state officials concerned about bringing diseases across the border from one state to the other, especially true in the state of New York, and is one of the strictest, if not the strictest state in the country when it comes to wildlife, because raccoons are considered a rabies vector. And with raccoons in New York, there are a lot of hoops to jump through if you want to have one to rehab. In fact, nine states have outright bans or severe restrictions on raccoon rehabilitation, not including New York. Typically, regulations are on a state-by-state -state basis. Thing is, you bring a raccoon into New York and you're at risk of losing a pre-existing permit. You can rack up some serious fines. You can even go to jail. We're also told by the rehabbers and others who back them up that they actually offered to help the Longos repeatedly. One rehabber, we're told, even begged them to take the raccoon, the peanut, and the squirrel. The Longos allegedly told them they didn't need their help. We've reached out to the Longos several times. We actually spoke with them once. That is in our next video. But before we could ask about rabies and the rehabbers and the DEC, Mark had to get off the phone. So coming up in our next video, our conversation with Mark Longo, and you are going to want to hear what he told us. Stay tuned.